In Season 2, Episode 10 of The Tudors, there is a very interesting scene. It depicts Anne Bullen, the second wife, and Jane Seymour, the third, each with their own reality. Anne Bullen is preparing to die in the Tower of London, and Jane Seymour is preparing for her engagement to Henry VIII. Meanwhile, a priest reads Ecclesiastes 3, where it says, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, that which is, is now, and that which is to be has already been. Today, we will continue the saga of Henry VIII's six wives, and talk specifically about the third. It seems interesting to start by mentioning the transition from the second, and Bolin, to the third, Jane. It was an incredibly simultaneous transition. While one was dying, the other was celebrating the engagement and married Henry, becoming the third wife just eleven days after the death of the second. The story of Henry VIII and his wives is always surprising. Even more surprising is that, considered a shy woman of gentle and conciliatory character, Jane Seymour was a lady-in-waiting to the second wife, Anne Bullen. She also served as a lady-in-waiting to Catherine of Aragon. When Catherine was repudiated by Henry, Jane Seymour was there, witnessing everything in the front row, the entire process of the significant matter of Henry VIII's divorce. Later, she also witnessed his marriage to Anne Bullen, only to become the third wife. This reveals a lot about this woman, because she is usually only associated as the mother of Henry VIII's only legitimate son. Today, you will learn more details about her in this video. Jane Seymour, the third wife of Henry VIII, was born on her parents' rural estate in Wiltshire, sometime between October 1507 and October 1508. Her early life is not particularly well documented. Jane's parents were Sir John Seymour and his wife, Marjorie Wentworth. He served as the local sheriff and justice of the peace, and her mother descended from King Edward I. However, they were not wealthy nobles, they owned a vast estate that provided a comfortable, though not impressive. Sir John earned the admiration of the king for his courage and loyalty, serving and fighting alongside Henry VIII in France between 1513 and 1514. Jane Seymour did not receive as high and privileged an education as the first and second wives of Henry. She could read and write a little, but she was much more trained in sewing. And managing a household, skills considered more necessary for women in the Tudor era. Reports that have endured to this day suggest that her sewing was highly intricate and refined. Sir John and Lady Marjorie had ten children, six of whom survived into adulthood, Jane's father made significant efforts to educate his older sons and launch them into political and military careers in the service of the king. Jane's older brother, Edward, and her third brother, Thomas, both steadily rose in importance and esteem throughout the reign of Henry VIII. However, their efforts were focused on the boys, as mentioned, given that Jane's education was much less varied than that of her older brothers. Jane was not a noble lady, and the Seymour family was not wealthy or important enough to provide elite education for their daughter. It is said that she was an excellent equestrian and enjoyed participating in hunts, both in her youth and later alongside Henry, already as queen. Much of her life and early education were designed to prepare her for domestic life. She would have been instructed in the responsibilities of a lady of the house, and it is quite possible that Jane, her mother, and her three younger sisters were directly involved in domestic chores more than one might assume. The family's estate was respectable and quite large, and it was likely the women who actively took care of and organized everything related to the household. Noble English women of the time rarely engaged in any domestic tasks, but the Seymour daughters, especially Jane as the eldest daughter, might well have been taught to cook and perform household chores. What is known for certain is that Jane was highly skilled in sewing and embroidery, two skills in which she particularly excelled. The fine and artistic quality of her needlework was notable enough for some of her works to survive for more than a century and a half on display at Hampton Court Palace. Jane's surviving tapestries were gifted to the Seymour family descendants in the 1650s. Jane Seymour stood out not only for her sewing and embroidery, but also ended up influencing her husband, Henry VIII, who himself became an adept embroiderer. In addition to these skills, religion played a significant role in Jane Seymour's life, 
and she was a devout Catholic. Described by various sources as kind, gentle, docile, and shy, she was said to have very pale skin, blue eyes, and blonde or red hair. She was not particularly beautiful and remained unmarried until the age of 20, which was considered quite advanced for a Tudor woman. Her younger sister, Elizabeth, is believed to have been exceptionally beautiful and married before her, in her mid-teens, to a rising young gentleman. There is also knowledge of some negotiation for an engagement in the year 1520 between Jane and William, the son of the gentleman, Sir Robert Dormer, but it seems that the lack of a substantial dowry prevented the groom's family from proceeding with that commitment. Supplied with a marriage settlement by her cousin-in-law Sir Francis Bryan, Jane, still unmarried at 19, finally secured a position as a lady-in-waiting to Queen Catherine of Aragon. The primary objective in sending Jane to the English court seemed to be to assist her in securing the most advantageous marriage possible. Jane arrived at Greenwich Palace sometime in the first half of 1527, approximately the same time and Bolin returned from France to also serve as a lady-in-waiting to Queen Catherine. Over the next five years, Jane resided in the Queen's household, directly witnessing the events unfolding during those years, especially those leading Henry to divorce his first wife. Jane Seymour held tremendous admiration and devotion to both Queen Catherine and her daughter, Princess Mary, and this respect for both women only became more evident as she spent more time with them at court. Nevertheless, Jane was undoubtedly a prudent young woman, and during those years, she never seemed to express an opinion on the well-known matter between King Henry and Anne Bullen. This is evident because, had she shown any disapproval, it would have been challenging for Anne Bullen to retain her as one of her ladies when she became queen after Catherine of Aragon's deposition. Jane spent two years in Anne Bullen's household, and during most of that period, there is no evidence that Anne was dissatisfied with her service or any of her actions. Surely, Jane knew she was on very dangerous ground and was cautious not to voice her opinions about Anne's relationship with Henry or Anne's conduct towards Queen Catherine and her daughter, something we now know she certainly disapproved of. This behavior is quite revealing. Jane might have been shy and compliant, but she was clever, silently observing the unfolding events and keeping them to herself. We can also infer that she adeptly played her cards in such a dangerous game, able to deal with and bullen both before and after Henry began to court her, showing that she had great ambition, ultimately becoming the king's third wife. It is not precisely known when or under what circumstances Henry and Jane began to have a romantic interest in each other. On January 29, 1536, the day of Catherine of Aragon's funeral, the imperial ambassador Shopwis claimed to have observed Henry paying special attention to Mistress Seymour and giving her gifts, which Jane returned with much kindness and prudence. At that time, Anne Bolin was not yet completely disgraced and was even expecting Henry VIII's long-awaited heir. However, on that same afternoon, it is rumored that Anne stumbled upon a private meeting between Henry and Jane and had a strong fit of rage upon finding Jane seated on her husband's lap. Supposedly, Henry quickly sent Jane out of the room and tried to calm Anne, fearing that her distress would harm her pregnancy. On that same night, Anne Bolin suffered a spontaneous miscarriage of her last child. In a letter dated that same day, Ambassador Shopwis reported that King Henry supposedly confessed to believing that he had married under the influence of witchcraft, wanting to annul his marriage to Anne Bolin. He added that the king was determined to take another wife, whom we know was Jane Seymour. If Jane managed to move unnoticed for two years, serving as a lady to Anne Bolin, the last months in the Queen's service, however cautious she was, were undoubtedly extremely tense and difficult for both and and Jane Seymour. Henry was not discreet enough in courting Jane, and Anne, who was still his mistress, had slapped Jane on several occasions for her insolence. Probably, and was consumed by jealousy and also desperate with fear and indignation, seeing that her husband was openly courting another woman. And Bullen knew better than anyone that the king's courtship of Jane Seymour was not merely to satisfy his sexual desires. It is known that and found out that Jane had a locket with Henry's picture and made her open it. Furious, she brutally tore the locket from Jane's neck, cutting her own finger in the process. But as annoying as Jane's presence was, and dared not dismiss her from her service. The queen was becoming increasingly insecure each day, afraid to do anything that could enrage Henry and motivate him to divorce her. 
As her power diminished, it was said that she regretted her treatment of Queen Catherine and Princess Mary. It must have been very difficult for Anne Bullen, just as it was for Catherine of Aragon, to live with that woman constantly in her service, knowing that she was already planning to take her place as queen. An undoubtedly distressing situation, as it was proof that Anne had already fallen from grace and that her end was near. She herself had played the same role in the case of the previous queen, Catherine of Aragon, and was only now experiencing the consequences. But in this case, Catherine of Aragon had a less bitter experience, as she had many powerful friends and died with dignity in her bed. And Bolin had another much more sordid, repugnant, and solitary experience, as she had made many enemies at court while trying to sit on the English throne. Among the few friends she still had, some abandoned her, and others turned against her to gain the favor of King Henry VIII. Henry was known for his appreciation of beautiful and captivating women, Catherine and and had been highly educated, astute, charming, articulate, and beautiful women. Jane could not match either of Henry's first two wives in any of these qualities. Some historians suggest that Henry may have fallen in love with Jane precisely because she was the opposite of Anne Bullen. And had been a difficult, demanding woman with a sharp tongue, who might have initially enchanted Henry but whom he now found irritating. Perhaps he considered the quiet, serene, and submissive Jane to be the perfect woman to be his wife. But let's not be mistaken. Without a doubt, Anne's, as well as Catherine of Aragon's, worst sin was not giving him a healthy male heir. Henry only decided to seek a third marriage after Anne's last miscarriage in early 1536 and the conclusion of the case against Queen Anne Bullen, who, accused of adultery, incest, and plotting against the king's life, was executed for treason on May 19, 1536. On the next day, May 20, Henry became engaged to Jane Seymour. The wedding ceremony took place on May 30, 1536, at Whitehall Palace in London. As a gift, the king granted Jane possession of 104 mansions in four counties, along with extensive wooded areas. On June 4, she was proclaimed queen. Fortunately, the coronation was postponed due to the plague ravaging London at the time, but it is speculated that Henry hesitated to crown Jane before she fulfilled her role as a royal consort by producing a male heir. As queen, Jane was described as rigid and formal, striving to distinguish herself completely from her predecessor. Her friendships were exclusively female, the vibrant court of Queen Anne, filled with splendid entertainments, joys, and extravagances, gave way to a strict application of decorum, almost oppressive. Jane banned the French fashion that Anne had introduced, suppressing excessively long sleeves and the French hood among her ladies, returning to the traditional gable hood. She did not involve herself in the king's political affairs, and the only time she did, at least as recorded, was in 1536, when she sought forgiveness for the participants in the Pilgrimage of Grace. This was strongly rejected by Henry, and with a stern warning, he reminded her of the fate of her predecessor when she got involved in the king's affairs. Jane was also seen as a very compassionate woman, and her clear sympathy for the late Queen Catherine and her daughter Mary won much popularity among the people and most courtiers. Jane established a very close relationship with her stepdaughter Mary, striving to bring her back to the court and royal succession, although remaining behind any children Mary might have with Henry. Despite her efforts, she could not bring Mary back into the line of succession, but she succeeded in reconciling her with Henry. A letter from Mary Tudor to Jane illustrates the gratitude and great appreciation that the young woman felt for the new queen. Jane unsuccessfully attempted the restoration of both Mary and Elizabeth, and Bolin's daughter, to the line of succession. In January 1537, the great news arrived, Jane Seymour was expecting a child. During the pregnancy, she developed a special appetite for quails, which Henry promptly ordered for her. After a difficult two-day and three-night labor, at 2 a.m. on October 18, 1537, she gave birth to the long-awaited male heir, the future King Edward VI. He was baptized on October 15, 1537, without his mother present. Princess Mary was the godmother to her newborn brother, while four-year-old Princess Elizabeth was carried in the arms of Thomas Seymour, Jane's brother, who would later plan to marry the young princess. 
Interestingly, the father of the previous queen, Thomas Bullen, was also present at the event. The joy over the birth of an heir would be short-lived, especially for Jane. The childbirth was extremely difficult, likely due to the baby's poor position. After the baptism, it became evident that the queen was seriously ill. Jane passed away on October 24, 1537, nine days after the birth of her son. A few weeks after her death, there were conflicting accounts of the cause of her demise. Some attributed to an infection of the retained placenta, and there were even suggestions of a caesarean section due to the prolonged labor. Henry ordered her to be cut open to safely retrieve the child. However, this version of events holds little weight. It is more likely that Jane succumbed to a severe puerperal fever after contracting a bacterial infection during childbirth. She was buried on November 12, 1537, in St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, following a funeral in which her stepdaughter Mary acted as the chief mourner. A procession of 29 women followed the princess, one for each year of the deceased queen's life. After Jane's death, Henry VIII wore black for the next three months and took two years to marry again. During his widowhood, he gained much weight, becoming obese, swollen, and developing diabetes and gout, transforming into the Henry VIII we know from the paintings and portraits that have endured. Much debate surrounds whether Jane Seymour was an ambitious woman who had been considering the possibility of ascending as the Queen of England for years, or if she was merely a victim of King Henry VIII's desires. Like any other woman of the Tudor era, she could have been used for the ascent of her brothers in the court, as both Thomas and Edward achieved significant positions in Henry VIII's court due to this marriage. After Jane's death, they took advantage of their roles as uncles to the new heir to increase their fortunes. After Henry's death, Thomas married the widow Catherine Parr. During the regency period of Edward VI, Jane's son, Edward Seymour, became the protector and ruler of England. Both brothers were executed. Jane Seymour, the third wife, was the consort of Henry VIII from their marriage on May 30, 1536, until her death the following year. Although not crowned, she was the only one of Henry VIII's wives to receive a funeral befitting her position as queen. 